welcome to my channel where you can find tutorials such as this one. In this case, this tutorial is part of a full course, which I will link in the description below along with a very good discount just for you. But you can also find some other tutorials on Xamarin itself, on the signing application, on other things. So please consider subscribing if you're new, if you're not. Thank you so much for watching this video again or visiting my channel again. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. During this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at an iOS project, Xamarin iOS project, of course, that uses SQLite databases to store data. I have already here an iOS application that I created with a single view application template. And once the project is ready in your computer, make sure that the first step that you do is open the main storyboard file. It may take a bit to load the designer, but once it is ready, we can go ahead and make some changes in order for us to have the main navigation of our application. What I'm going to search for is a table view controller, or actually I could start with a navigation controller which already has a table view in it. And once it is added, I can move the view controller, the default view controller a little bit to the right and just make things a little bit more organized and move this arrow to the navigation controller. So now the navigation controller is the first controller or the first view to be loaded. Now, the next thing that we have to do is add a bar button item to the right of the root view controller title. And in here, I'm going to change the identifier to be add. And I'm simply going to do a, a control drag to the view controller and click on show. This way I have all the navigation ready. I'm also going to be changing the title inside here to just be books. And the rest of the interface I am going to design a little bit later. What I want to do in this lecture is make sure that everything is ready for me to start adding elements and reading elements from a database. To be able to do that, the first thing that I have to do is add a couple of references. So inside of my solution explorer, I'm going to, and inside of my project, of course, I'm going to search for references. I'm going to right click on it, select edit references. And in here, I'm going to be searching for mono.data.sqlite. And I'm also, also going to be searching for system.data. I'm going to select the checkboxes to the left of each of these packages. I'm going to click on OK. And both packages are now going to be referenced inside of my project. The next step is to add a NuGet package created by a third party that will allow us to work with SQLite very easily. So I'm going to select the packages folder inside of my project, going to right click on it, select add packages, and make sure that nuget.org is selected and search for SQLite-net. You'll be able to find it's probably the first result in here. Make sure that the author is a Frank Kruger. Thanks, Frank. Click on it or select it and click on add a package. After a while, you'll see some elements being added to your project. These are just classes that Frank has created so you can work with SQLite-net in a very easy way with things that are already available for you with the C-sharp language. So you're not going to be needing to use any SQL queries. All you have to do is use C-sharp, which by now you should be very comfortable with. Now, the next step that we have to do is actually create the view controller or the C sharp file that will control this table view controller. So remember that to be able to do that, all you have to do is select the table view, go to your properties inspector, select class and start typing something like book table view controller, click enter and magically the class will be created. So inside of this new file, the book table view controller .cs file, we will need to do a couple of things. First, we'll need a private string. Uh, sorry, I don't know what I did there. I deleted this. Okay, private string. And I'm going to be calling this path to database. And I'm also going to be needing a private list of book. 
and the book class is one that I will be creating in just a second. I'm just going to be defining a variable that is going to be called books. And to be able to use this list class, I need to add a reference to its namespace. And to be able to quickly do this, all I need to do is type alt enter. And I see this option that I can actually quickly add the using statement so I can start using list. Now the book class, I'm going to create it in this same file and I am going to be defining it as a public. It's going to be class book, not inheriting from anything. And this is going to be having a couple of things inside of it. First, it's going to have a property that is going to be string name for the name of the book. It's also going to have a string author for the author of the book. And I'm actually going to be adding a, an integer ID. But the ID has to have a couple of properties that will allow SQLite to know that this is the primary key. So to be able to set it, I have to add these two characters and inside of it, I'm going to write primary key and auto increment. And to be able to use this, I can go alt enter and select using SQLite. And now this ID property for the book class is going to be the primary key and it's going to be auto incrementing as I create new elements. So I now have the book and I'm already able to use this class. The next thing that I have to do is actually create the database and I'm going to be doing it in the view did load method. Remember that to access the view did load method, all you have to do is override it because it's already on the parent class and search for it. View did load and it's right there. And right below the call to the base method, I am going to be adding some new code. So the first thing that I need is the documents folder. And to be able to access the documents folder that exists on any iOS device, I have to go to environment dot get folder path. And the folder that I'm that I'm looking for is environment. I believe it's a special folder. And in here, look at all of the folders that you can access. And I'm actually going to be using the personal folder. And now inside of this variable, I have the path to this folder itself. Then I can set the path to database, that is the variable that we have up here, to be equal to path. And to be able to use the path class, I need to do alt enter and select to add the sentence using system.io. So we can now use this class. And here we're going to be using the combined method, which will receive two strings or three or four or as many strings as we want. Right now, all we need is two strings. The first one is going to be the path to the documents folder. And the second one is simply going to be the name of the file where the database is going to be stored. In this case, I'm going to be calling the file books underscore db dot db. And this way we know that the database is always going to be inside this path inside of this file. So whenever we want to access it again, to read, to write, to update, whatever we need, we have to use this path. And it's going to be easy for us to remember because we can always access this path for this folder using environment or a special folder dot personal. And we could also access this file from whichever class that we need. Now, one last step that we need to make sure that is ready before we move forward to actually reading and writing into the database is to actually create a table because we cannot read and write from a database if we do not have a table. So how do we create a table? Well, actually, since we already have the path to the database, all we need to do is connect to this database. And once we have connected, we can create the table. To connect, we are actually going to be using a using sentence. Using a using is kind of weird, but okay, using a using sentence 
but in a different way on which we use it up here. In this case, this using sentence is going to be letting me know that I'm going to be using a specific variable for only inside a block of code. It'll be a little bit more understandable once we have done this. Just bear with me for just a second. In here, I'm going to define a new variable that I'm going to define connection that is going to be equal to a new SQLite.SQLite connection. SQLite connection, it's right here. And the SQLite connection, we can create it by specifying the path where the database is located. Now, here is where the using statement is quite useful. By doing this, the connection, which is being defined inside of this using statement, will only be available inside of this block of code. As soon as the execution leaves this block of code, connection will be destroyed. This is important because we, only, we can only have a connection, one connection at a time. So it is important for us to do it like this, just in case we forget to disconnect manually. This way, the disconnection will happen automatically as soon as execution leaves this block of code. For example, if we create this connection to create a table, and then we need a, another connection to read the table, but there is already one connection, we won't be able to read from the table. We won't be able to create a connection because there is already a connection being established. So by doing this and by using the using statement, again, using the using statement, we can be 100% sure that we will be able to create another connection whenever we want without having to close this connection manually. The connection will be closed automatically. So inside of this, now that we have talked about this using statement, inside of this using statement with the connection available, what we can do is just that connection to create a table. And to create a table, all we have to do is to specify the type of the table, which is in this case going to be book, and call the method create table. And yeah, that's it. That's all we have to do. The creation of the table is completed. And just in case you're wondering, if this is executed a second time, which will happen eventually, the table won't be created again because it already exists. So this will only be ignored. Nothing will be executed. So there you have it. This is the first step. We have created the navigation for the application. We have the table view where all of the books are going to be listed. We have a view controller where the user will be able to eventually add new books. Of course, it is not completed, but it is there. And we already have this book table view controller that already connects to the database and creates a table because we have already added a couple of references and added a package that has allowed us to do this very easily. In the next lecture, in the next video, we are going to be covering how to actually insert something into the database and then retrieve it so we can display it into the table view.